And out front now, the Democratic Congressman Mike Quigley of Illinois, who is a longtime member of the Intelligence Committee and is the co-chair of the Congressional Ukraine Caucus. So, Congressman, uh, wonderful to have you with us and to be, be here together uh, in person. So I want to play again because, you know, um, we, we have not heard this sort of thing for a while, even on Telegram and other places of, of such internal dissent uh, in Russia. Uh, the woman, again, who criticized the war uh, and used the profanity. Let me just play part of what she had to say again for you, Congressman. What do you think about it? Can I use profanity? It's f***ed up. Why? Because they're just sending people out to die. I haven't figured out what the purpose of the war is yet. We're just fighting and fighting. Now, her identity is concealed, but even to take the risk of saying such a thing is, is obviously very significant uh, sure. in terms of what the repercussions could be. Um, does it say anything to you that we're hearing this now? Um. In the middle of the Second World War, we sometimes forget that uh, we had to convince people that the war still mattered and we had to continue the support at home. This is why we're engaged with this. This is Frank Capra's uh, movies back then, Why We Fight. Uh, we're about to vote on a supplemental as to whether or not to continue to aid Ukrainian, uh, the Ukrainian military in this war. This is as good a reason to remind our folks of why we do this, because yeah. this wouldn't just be happening in Russia. This would be the, the tyrant type of activities, not just in Ukraine, where we saw the, uh, the sins of this war, and I was there in Bucha, for example, yeah. but in Moldova, the Baltics, Eastern Europe. So, so when Putin says um, that he has 300,000 more recruits, does that, does that, do you think that's real? I think it's real. I think it's possible that the Russian army is larger than it was when the war started. Which is uh, stunning when you think about the, the death that they've had. Oh, sure. But if you are a tyrant who doesn't care about using your people as cannon fodder, you don't worry if they're trained, particularly well paid, uh, you use convicts, and then it's possible to have those numbers pop up because they really don't have a choice but to be there. And in terms of where this is going now, you know, the defense minister, Sergei Shoigu, visited the headquarters of the Russia Pacific Fleet. Uh, and they talked about how they're developing multipurpose nuclear submarines. And, and then Russia announced a newest nuclear weapon. It's operational. They say it's ready to go. It's been placed on combat duty. Now, some of this may be bluster. Some of it may be real. Not sure if you're sure where the line is. Um, but But do you think that that this escalation is, is a real threat? We've had this kind of threat since the first day of the war. Right. Even before it began, they, he talked about, you know, limited tactical nuclear weapons, right. for example. He said if any former territory or former, former territory of, of Russia was attacked, then that's a red line. Well, you know, that was bluster because there, and even more recently, there have been uh, successful attacks into Crimea, which is part right. of that area. So uh, you have to take Putin very seriously. He's capable of anything, but you can't let him blackmail you or, yeah. or frankly scare you uh, that you know, not to do the right thing. So you talk about the supplemental about to get the vote. Yeah. Um, unfavorable views of President Zelensky, who will be in Washington next week and visiting the White House and Congress, among Republicans certainly have gone up. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's been some weakening among Democrats, um, you know, but, but, you know, well, two to 11 percent, right? That's a big jump, but it's a small number overall. But Republicans, right? I mean, you see that. Um, is there a risk that this doesn't pass, that, you're, that this aid is not going to continue? And how much is, is, is on Zelensky next week to get anything over the finish line? I think uh, the evidence that when Zelensky was here last time, mm -hmm. uh, there was a big boost, and it did help. Uh, I think it hurts us that Ukraine is not in the news as much. Uh, but I think when there's good news, it helps, right? The, the recent uh, successful attacks into Crimea Good news breeds good news on appropriations. Yeah. Um, so I think some of it's on Zelensky. But let's just look at the reality. The majority of Democrats and the majority of Republicans still favor supporting Ukraine in this war. Just a little while ago, it was probably 11 to 12 of the farthest right Republicans who were Trump-like Putin appeasers. You see more, and you're right. There are more Republicans who sort of raise questions about this. Right. But when you hear what they're actually saying, it sounds more like what they're talking about is uh, maybe appealing to the far right base. And maybe we get language in there about more oversight, whatever it takes. I still think we get it done. Right, right. And of course, it's it's worth noting, and not we can certainly go into how much money it really is relative to other things, which would be important, but also worth noting that a lot of this aid is going 
frankly, to Americans and American companies that are building uh, tanks and ammunition uh, to, to send to Ukraine. All right. Thank you very much, Congressman. I appreciate thank your you. time.